Welcome to Mining Now, everybody. Uh, I am your host, Jared Downey. We have, uh, you've seen them on the show before. You'll see them on the show again as they push a incredible product into the market. Graymont, uh, we're going to be talking about how they have uh, released Graybond into the market and just the story behind developing a product. So much of what we see in the industry is the end result. We see when a new product, but we're going to actually dig in today on the stages it took to get this to market and and look forward to the future of what will it'll look like as Graymont continues to put Graybond in. Um, we have Frank Zoros on. I feel like I said your last name wrong. Did I? No, that's correct. Zoros. Zoros. Yeah. Um, he is the marketing director for Graymont. Frank, welcome back. Uh, we're doing it in person. It was remote last time. Yeah. So Yeah, good. glad to be here and uh, to, to your studio. I'm uh, excited to keep rolling with Graybond and introduce the product and Graymont and and uh, how we got here. Uh, you know, it's an exciting time for us and for the industry, and we're, we're glad to be part of it. Well, you know what happens on these shows is, um, you know, it, I think sometimes people people feel like we're doing a sales job. It's like, do more episodes, do more episodes. Um, but it really is, like like the Noreen and I were just, you know, just had a discussion. And the more episodes you do, people will sometimes think that the less the audience will engage, but it's the exact opposite mm. because they learn they're now they're more familiar with gray, gray Mott and gray bond. And it's like, every time we have, this is now our fourth episode with you. I go, Oh, now I understand that element of that element. And it just rounds out. And, and what you've done in the industry of, of putting a new product that actually changes an industry is not a small feat. And that's the first question I wanted to ask is just from a company that's basically doing, I mean, just a commodity, right? You're a commodity company, essentially, right? In the past. Yeah. We, we'd like to say it's a specialty commodity. It, it's an essential commodity, but yeah, it is. It's, it's a basic material that we take. We mine limestone. We calcine it. We produce lime. That's yeah. the essence of our business. But now we're taking the lime and making other materials from the so, line i guess it's actually then who is the before gray bond who was the client who was the client of graymont yeah so if you look at graymont right been in business 75 years and the the lime is the essence of our business and it, think about every basic material basic uh, chemical process lime is a part of it if you want to mine a mineral like nickel uh, or gold Lime plays a part in the mining part of it to extract it and in the water treatment when you have the outfall back in the environment or whatever you'll do with that water. If you take uh, municipal water, you can't produce municipal drinking water without lime. Um, you can't build a road without managing the soil, whether you want to dry it or strengthen it without lime. So lime touches almost every part of our, of our world. It's an, we call it an essential ingredient to make the world happen. Yeah. So it, you know we're we're fortunate that uh, we're 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 in the we're in the material that is needed everywhere around the world. And you know we're a global company. We've been in business seventy five years, and we continue to find new uses for lime. One of them is gray bond. Yeah, and that, <laughs> but it's a shift though in the sense of even who you're talking to. I mean, you're yeah. sort of going into a whole new world right so like if so it would be a mining operator like who would have been who would have been buying that commodity yeah so a oh, good point you know we, we've been in the mining industry for a long time and we, we've been mainly on the processing side or the treatment of the the waste side now we're talking to new people in the mining uh, world right. that are actually using gray bond in the construction part of mining, right? right? So now you're talking contractors. It's yeah, a whole talking, different talking world. Contractors, we're talking engineers that use the material underground to strengthen uh, the voids underground. And before they were using cement, right? But you know, the world's changing. They're looking for alternative cementitious binders. And we were at the right place at the right time. We had the chemistry, we had the knowledge, and we built it up from our past experiences. Right. Yeah. That, that's the whole thing that we, we learned. A lot of stuff uh, in other industries, and we applied it to produce gray bond. And that, that's the essence, and we continue to learn. It's going to be different five years from now than it is today because of what we're doing. Let's talk about our heavy industry world tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment, supplying mining equipment worldwide. And Corporate Traveler Canada, helping companies travel the globe simpler, faster, easier. 
We are heading to events across North America and Australia and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of Crownsman's heavy industry world tour. In the demanding world of mining, safety and performance are paramount. Sophie is a comprehensive solution built for the unique needs of the mining industry. From the ground up, their technology helps everyone who works in, manages, and leads mining operations to create high-performance work environments and ensure they come home safely every day. Create the workplace everyone wants to be a part of. Choose Sophie. Visit sophie.com to learn more. CIM is Canada's leading technical institute dedicated to the sustainability of our industry. Members enjoy professional growth opportunities through CIM libraries, publications, webinars, societies, and the job board. Experience the CIM community firsthand at the Conference of Metallurgists, August 19th to 22nd, ICARD, September 16th to 20th, and the CIM Health and Safety Conference, October 6th to 8th. Visit CIM.org for more information and join CIM today. That's actually a, a good clarification, though. It, I don't know if I have this right because your, your your production, and we won't. We, there's there's some announcements and stuff that are going to be down the road, so we won't get into that. But the the production, the capabilities aren't you. Those don't didn't need to change that much, did they? For the gray bond, it was more. Um, it it's more the the marketing, the messaging, meeting these new sort of industries, right? Yeah. Or, do, yeah. or does capabilities had to change well, as well? The base production is the same. We right. start with lime. However, we start with lime and limestone. Those are our two basic ingredients. So Graybon is a, a blend of lime, limestone, and pozzolan. And pozzolan is a natural material. It's mined today. Um, we buy in and bring it into the company and we use it to blend. So uh, what our new capabilities are the milling. So we have to bring these products together. We mill them to a certain particle size, similar right. to cement, and then we blend them together in a proportion that's needed for the application. So those are the new capabilities. It's not like we're building these uh, totally new production plants. We're, 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 we call it come to market fast to take our existing materials and put them in the right proportion to get it to the right end use uh, application. It's like adding a piece to a system. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're, you know, I, I don't want to make it too light. We, we are investing. We're, yeah. we're adding people, we're adding uh, capabilities and uh, new raw materials, new equipment. And the whole point of it is we're listening to the customer. We, we didn't walk in and say, here's what we have, use it. No, this is what we're thinking. The rain was talking about that as well, yeah. that every application is it's different. Yeah. It's a little different. And, yeah. And, you know, it's challenging too because we're used to producing a product that's one product. Right. Now, we're working with a customer to to, to customize, to engineer that's the solution. Big, that's a huge, like that, yeah. you know, it's, easy, it's an easy thing to gloss over, but it's actually a huge difference when you go from, this is, uh, I'll relate it back to our world. We're you come into our studio, we have it all fixed, our cameras are set up the way that they set it up. Now, if you switch that into the world of commercials, let's say, now there's this creative element, people have a different idea. That's a very different thing. In your world, a commodity is here's the bag of what we make all right. here. Right, right. You, you know, that's a certain it, spec. Yeah, it's a certain spec, and that's what it is. And uh now it's oh yeah, yeah, it's a commodity. However, it's a specialty engineered product that's gonna meet your specific end use. Yeah, and, it, and it's a mind shift for our company too. Graymont yeah. is going through a transformation, and it's a good, it's a good thing. We're, we're bringing in new talents because you already have that base still. That base, the base is still there. Yeah, the base is there, and now it's the mindset of working to make that base even better for an end use. Yeah, and it's you know we're learning. Yeah, every day something new comes up, and we we adjust and learn. When did um when did Graybon when or how did yeah. it get identified as a solution? What 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 happened within even the company to say this is something we got to look at? Yeah, so let me go back a little bit in history, starting about ten years ago. All right, that's when it, and it wasn't Graybon then. We were we we're heavily uh, involved in the Alberta oil sands. Okay, all right. And uh, what we noticed is lime is effective in the oil sands markets to um, sequester and to bind alumina silicates, the waste material coming out of the oil sand. Okay. And, I, and what they do with that is they, they put that in, 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 in back in the pond and you want to minimize the waste, you want to treat the water. And we're, we're still involved in that, but what we noticed is that lime had a very specific uh, uh, result when you mixed it with these alumina silicates, these 
soils coming out of oil sands, right? And but five years ago, uh, one of our scientists said, "Hey, we I think we can take this and do something else with it in a, a type of a construction or underground mining application." And that was the the basis of the idea of the innovation. So we started. We did some uh, initial trials in our lab, experiments, and uh, about a year in, we said, hey, there is value here in the construction world with lime, more than we're, what we're doing today. And as it happened, we had a collaborator, a current client in the Western U.S. who was, who was using our lime for another purpose. There was also doing underground mining and was, was using cement, was using some fly ash, but they were having issues with supply, uh, delivery, um, quality. And it gave us an entry point to say, would you be open to trying a new type of material that we're th- we think we can develop? Uh, we didn't even call it gray bond then. We didn't yeah. know what to call it then. Um, and they said, yeah. Uh, and so we worked with them uh, on, on the R&D stage first, about a year. Then we went to the, uh, the larger trail uh, trial phase. And by the third year, we're actually doing underground trials. We're doing live trials with them in the mine. And we proved out that our product can replace up to 50% of their cement. And at this current state, we're replacing about 35% of their cement. It's optimal replacement. We're meeting all the strength requirements that they had with cement. And it looks like we're able to lower their total use of binder together with their rock. So that means a cost savings for them based on the total uh, the cementitious material that they're going to need. And on top of it, we're giving them a greenhouse uh, reduction because our product has lower greenhouse gas footprint than cement. So it's a win-win. And that, 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 that process, I'd say, from idea of Graybond to, yeah, market trial and, and market uh, acceptance or on the trial, took about five years. Wow. And it, it's, uh, when you think back, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I've been here for three years. I walked in and saw the innovation and what we were doing and said, this is fantastic stuff. How do we push it? Were faster? you familiar with Graymont before, though? Had you had interaction with them? I, I was a customer. Oh, you were a, cl- a client. Yeah. Oh, okay. I came from the chemical industry. Oh. Uh, we, we were using uh, Graymont Lime in one of our processes. So, oh, I see. so I knew how it worked, but I didn't. What's your What's your bat- background? I'm a chemist originally. Oh, okay. Um, long time ago, um, I started in the labs and worked uh, my way through procurement, the sales, marketing, and I was working for a company that was uh, making mining additives, and uh, uh. part of the mining additive needed lime to to activate it, mm. and that's how I knew Graymont. And when I came to Graymont, it was oh. Lime can do much more than just this little piece in mining, and this turned to gray bond. Effortless Corporate Traveler Management is here with Corporate Traveler Canada. Boost your business with trusted expert solutions that save time, money, and enhance the traveler experience. Trusted by thousands of companies worldwide. Book and track your travels on your phone or let your dedicated consultant handle it for you. Enjoy 24-7 support and live chat from any time zone and get real-time travel alerts anywhere you go. Your next business trip just got easier. Learn more about Corporate Traveler Canada at corporatetraveler.ca. Make the most of your broadband network by adding Mission Critical Voice with TASTA's PTT. Trust TASTA Americas for flexible solutions that fit your needs and integrate seamlessly with data networks and devices. Take advantage of your existing broadband network such as LTE, 5G, and or Wi-Fi to provide secure, reliable voice communications with their on-premise solution. TASTA Americas, your communication and safety partner. Visit TASTAAmericas.com or follow them on LinkedIn to learn more. Attention builders, we've got everything you need to know about the grit and grind of the construction world in one show. The Construction Show is where you can share your expert techniques and strategies to help keep the crew strong and construction sites secure. From foundational tips, industry trends, safety strategies to advanced equipment and machinery. Be part of the voice of construction. Book your episode and showcase your company to millions worldwide. Visit crownsman.com. Correct me on all the the wrong things I'm about to say, but um, I'll give it a shot. But this does go back further historically, way beyond. Now, again, please correct me. (laughs) But the Romans were using heavy lime to to make concrete, right? I mean, lime has been used 
even before the Romans, the Egyptians, uh, the Mesopotamian cultures, it's a basic building material <clears throat> that binds soils and dirt together. You can make mud bricks with it. And what the Romans figured out, you know, we, sometimes we say that the ancient people were not smart. They were smarter than as smart as we are. They just didn't have all the equipment to work with and the computers. It just right? Took a little bit longer. And a little longer. More more manpower. <laughs> yeah. Well, what they figured out is they could take lime together with uh, um, pozzolan, which is a volcanic ash. So were they using? They were using yeah. pozzolan as well. Oh, well, okay. It, well, that, so, uh, that was no. my next question. Were they missing an, one of the ingredients? They found volcanic ash from Mount Vesuvius worked perfectly with lime to make a a, cem- a cement. They didn't know what it was. They, all they knew was when they put it together over time, it hardened and kept their buildings together. And guess what? That was the first cement. And what they did was they would take that pozzolan and transport it throughout the world, wherever they were, and they would build with it with because they could get lime anyway. They couldn't get that ash. Oh, okay. And that's how it started. Now, you know, uh, what happened with the Roman Empire fell... The Renaissance came along. Finally, they figured out what the Romans were doing, but nobody has been able to make the same exact Roman cement. Right. We're close. It's not the same, but we're really close. So, but it, there, so there is a similarity to it. There is a similarity. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when I was doing my research. That's about the only comparison I could find. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we learned from that, and what we did was we took our unique materials, lime and limestone, together with a pozzolan. And blended them in the right proportion for the right application, and it'll vary. We're on, we engineered for depending on the end use to get the strength that's needed for that application. And you know we're, we were fortunate that we were granted a patent uh, on the material, and we continue to to develop it. And and just to first of where we're at right now, you are you've gone beyond trials right now. now yeah. Right? So we've had uh, three. We've had two major trials with a minor. We've had uh, so fully active mine, fully active yeah, mine, yeah, fully active underground mine mine company uh, in the U.S. We are in uh, uh, advanced lab pre field trials with two other miners in eastern Canada, underground mines. Uh, we expect to have uh, um, m- uh, full scale mining trials with these two other miners uh, early next year. Um, and we expect to be in the market, uh, in the mining industry, uh, early 2025. Now, beyond mining, mi- mining underground construction, we're also into soil stabilization, which is not, it's, it's construction. Yeah. And we've had one major trial in the Western U.S. on that, another one planned, another one planned in the Midwest U.S. And right now we're gearing up for uh, introduction and trials into the uh, construction ready mix concrete market. Wow. I wanted to actually circle back to the, I, I lost my train of, uh, with the, the Roman thing. Yeah. Why? Now, obviously there's been, like you said, the fall of the Roman Empire. But even now, why has it been so long since someone is doing this? Because it seems like when you're talking, there, there's a couple products that we've had on the show that you're like, oh, obviously this needs to be in the market. This is one of the products. Why has it taken so long? I mean, it's only, we're talking, what, 10 years ago the discussion started. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a couple thousand year yeah, gap. That's a good question. What happened was uh, cement was invented. And cement is a is similar to what the Romans were doing. It works a little differently. It gains a lot of early strength. Right. It, I mean, it'll set right away. The strength will be there. And it typically stops growing strength at about 28 days. You get 90% of your strength. The difference between the Rome, what the Romans were doing, Romans had, it took longer to gain the strength. But by day 28, it equals cement, today's cement, and continued to gain strength. Gain strength. The Roman buildings are still standing. There's a reason for that because they figured out how to make that strength continue to build. Um we took that approach, and we took that approach for two reasons. One is it met the need of the end user, and on top of it, we were able to combine the materials. Cement is a great material. One of the drawbacks of cement is that it has a, a huge um, greenhouse gas emission. It's just the nature of the product. Our lime has the same thing. It's similar to cement. However, when we combine our lime with limestone and pozzolan, we're able to reduce that greenhouse gas footprint 
anywhere between 30 and 70%, depending on how it's used, right? And still provide the strength of cement. And we're not here to say, use our product, get rid of cement. No, we, we're synergistic. We want to work with, with you. Can you replace 100% of your cement in your end use? Maybe. But if you can only replace 30%, guess what? We're going to work with you. We're going to find the optimal blend of cement and our, and our gray bond that'll work for your specific end use to get you where you need to be on uh, with strength, reduce greenhouse gas, because everybody's got these same pressures, right? Yeah. We want to meet our strength needs. We want to meet our needs to build uh, um, uh, projects, but at the same time, you can't deny that greenhouse gases are doing something into your environment. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're managing it and we're not going to tell you what to do. We're going to help you come to the decision that's good for you. And that's put, our approach. And I, what I want to get into as well is that those first trials, uh, th <laughs> this type of thing, just th this, this stuff fascinates. I could spend a year just following you around eavesdropping on these discussions. I just, for whatever reason, I find this stuff fascinating those first trials with an operating mind, what, like never mind the whole project. What is the day one discussion like? Yeah, is it an existing client? So you go to them. Like, how do you even approach the? Co yeah, well, the, 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 minds me, are notoriously conservative. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me talk about let me talk about two cases. One because we knew them, we knew the miner well. We were selling them already. Right, and okay. and, and they and we knew they were having issues with uh, their cement binder supply. So this is a supply chain issue. Yeah, they have not a, a product issue. Supply they chain had a issue. supply chain issue. Okay, so that's how the discussion started. Uh, you know, and it would be, it was something like, okay, we're selling them, we're having a casual conversation, and they say, yeah, you know, we're having a problem with our underground mining because we can't get the cement when we need it. It it can be delayed a week, and that when you delay them a week, guess what? They can't mine for that week. Yeah, because they can't control the substructure. And we said, oh, interesting. So, I mean would you ever consider an alternate material? And in our mind, we knew we were working on something. And they said, if you have something, we'll talk to you. And that's how, that's how the conversation started. And it wasn't like, here it is, try it underground. No, it took a year of working with them, working with an outside uh, collaborator that validated our results that they trusted. So what would that, what would an outside validator who like? What, uh, the company's called Patterson and Cook. They are a, a major uh, validating laboratory that oh, actually okay. it's a laboratory act company actually developed a lot of the underground mining backfill requirements together oh, with the I miners. See. Okay, miners trust them, so we we actually work with them. We spent the time and the effort to validate our product together with the mining company, and the results came in and it showed that yeah, we could be a real solution to replace part of their cement needs. And what what year was this? Uh, I would say about uh, started two to three years ago. Um, okay, so, so twenty twenty five. So twenty twenty one. Well, twenty twenty four. Yeah, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. Around yeah, there. Okay. Uh, and and it wasn't a drop in, right? <laughs> Going from an idea through research to validation, there's stops. There's Backward, well, that's what forward. I'm sort of fascinated I mean, it's, it's, that the mind yeah. that that the the operating mind sort of well, the willingness to go. I mean, obviously, if there's a need, that drives willingness. Yeah. That that helps. Um, but was the product how developed was the product when that conversation? Or did you like even your processing? You you said there's like this milling process and all yeah. that. So was that already developed, or did no, you have? You it had, was a concept initially when we talked. Wow, about it, it was a concept. And you didn't have the equipment sitting there nothing. ready to. No, we did, but we did it. We we developed it in the lab. We knew wow. we could do it. We put it together. Right. They saw it. We got it validated, and then we worked with another company that actually helped us blend it in larger scale. Which is, you know, we we paid for that development ourselves. And it, oh, so it they just, had like the like essentially the the processing equipment. Yeah, it, it's a let's call it a pilot scale blending equipment. Oh, okay. Right? Um, and it, through every. St part of the process together with a mining partner they were involved so we the way, the way we started we made small cubes that looked like this glass here and we test them for strength that's okay we passed that we make larger cylinders mm. we test them for strength it, the mining company concurred the collaborator company uh, that that does the testing concurred and then 
that led to, okay, we're ready to do a field trial with you, and we'll set that up. And, so to do a field trial, then you that partner that's doing the, pro, the, the actual processing, they're producing the product at that point. Yeah, right? what, what happened was that by that time, we had actually uh, invested in a small processing unit ourselves. And what's the process, if you don't mind me asking, what's yeah. the process, like what, what kind of units are there? Yeah, you, let's call them... Uh, uh, blender hoppers, right? So okay. So you uh, imagine you've got a, a few tons of a uh, of a storage equipment. Uh, say three of them. You got your products in each one of them, and you're metering in the final materials with uh, some kind of uh, screw system that meters in the right proportion, making sure it's homogenized. And at the at the end. You get your gray bond. And this is no liquid involved. This no. Is all it's dry. All, this it's all dry. It's all dry processing. Yeah, dry processing. All, okay. So we supply the dry lime, dry limestone, and the dry pozzolan in the right uh, um, sizing. So it's, it, it should be should look and feel like cement. And then it's processed together, homogenized, so there's no separation. That's the final product. Right. Okay. So we did that uh, in one of our remote sites. And we delivered it. Uh, we delivered uh, a couple of tr- full truckloads to the uh, to the miner, and they then took it, blended it with their crushed rock, uh, formed a kind of kind of a rough concrete, and that's what they fed underground to mm. to fill their uh, their voids. And then was this part? And now, so we're talking. This is kind of twenty one, twenty two. This is all happening. Yeah, but uh, this trial uh, we did one in twenty three, a full mine trial underground. Same one or a different mine? Same mine. Okay. Right. So that was our first one. The results were mixed. Some were good. Some were not. So, but what that told us is we have to adjust our formula, and work with them to get to the optimal formula. And then we did a second trial in early twenty twenty four. Uh, ended in February. Adjusted formula, adjusted percentages, success. So when when you're saying the uh, good and and some were good, some were not. What what made one good and one not? Um, strength gain. So in the first trial, we met the strength gain in 28 days, but not in the in the one to seven day range. Uh, cement was still better than us. So, oh, so the tar- the target. The target. We were right. slightly under the targets, but what we showed is at 28 days we were equal or above cement, and we continued to grow in strength which is typical of a lime pozzolan system. Yeah. So we, so, but they, you know, they say, hey, you, you need to help us get to the strength game between one and day they, one they, and seven. They literally have, they need to, they need to start mining. Yeah, yeah. You, you, they, they got to get that early strength going, right? Yeah. So I said, okay, let's work together. Let's figure out how to do this. We did. We adjusted the formula on the second trial. We equal the strength gain in day one to seven. Same strength gain by day 28 and continue to grow. Wow. It was a success. So now we're discussing what are the next steps? How do we get to commercial discussions together? And we're right now building out our uh, our commercial scale quantities. We're starting out in three sites in North America, uh, one in Canada, two in the U.S. Wow. Uh, that'll be our initial foray into the uh, cementitious material market. Uh, we're calling it low-carbon cementitious material because of the low-carbon footprint. And, uh, and so, when you say low carb footprint, that is in the production pr- to produce the product to in pro- comparison to cement. To produce the product and the the amount of carbon loading that the product has compared to cement. What do you mean by carbon loading? Um, okay, so when you produce cement or lime, you ha- you take the material and you have to calcine it, heat it to about a thousand degrees C, for example, and that emits carbon dioxide. So that goes into the atmosphere. Yeah. Right. Our product is can range anywhere between twenty to thirty percent lime, for example. Mm. So we don't have a full lime load. The limestone has no carbon load on it, essentially, because it's yeah. it, you're not heating it. The pozzolan has no carbon load, so we have a minimum of a th- the two thirds less carbon load on our product versus a cement or a lime. And uh, based on how much cement you can replace, that the customer can claim uh, X percent of their reduction in carbon emissions from their purchased raw materials. Mm. Um, and the processing is uh, doesn't take a lot of effort in terms of uh, heating or drying, and so we don't we're not adding a lot of uh, um, extra energy to the right. process. We're blending it. We might be drying a little bit, but not enough to add a lot of carbon. Uh, load to the product. I guess I'm, that's. I guess another important clarification is supply chain issue because you're, you're like cemented run into some issues. 
Yeah, in uh, certain parts of the country, they have right. Yeah. What um, in in your case, what is that like? The the positive positan is that how you say it? Positan. Positan. Yeah. So um, yeah. So what we're doing is uh, we we have a lot of different sites where we, we produce lime and limestone, mm-hmm. um, and we have um, uh, more than one producer of positan that we're working with. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. So and then we're gonna have we're gonna start out with three production sites. So we'll have more than one way to where to produce it. Right. Okay. And uh, our our ability to to produce uh, from a base base raw materials all the way through the final gray bond, we have, we'll have redundancy in the system, and uh, we'll be able to meet the customers' needs. That that's the way we're setting ourselves up, so they're not tied to one source. So now now moving along. So now when did soil stabilization? Um, when did that become part of the discussion? Yeah. Was it pretty quick? Uh, no, that's, no. A, that's a good question because we were so focused on mining, and right? Because that's know, the world you're in. That's yeah, the world we you know. we yeah. were there, and then we was, then you know I, I'd say about twenty twenty two to twenty three, we we looked at it and said we're doing construction here. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, it's underground mining, but what they're doing, they're, they're making a, a rough ready mix or a rough like cement paste. Why can't this be used in standard construction? So this is after you've been at it for a few years. Yeah, now, before the discussion started. Okay, then, you know our scientists and uh, our marketers, our salespeople started making that connection, and we said, "Hey, you know what? Let's try it." And we did. We we did some trials, and it it started to work. So, and then soil stabilization was the next one, the next market we went into, because we already sell lime in soils. Right. Okay. Right? You're already in that. Space. Yeah, we're in yeah, the we're yeah. in the space, and wherever there's uh, soils can be anywhere from heavy clays to to sand. When it's heavy clays, you lime must be used because that's what breaks up the clay and develops the strength. Yeah. If it's sand, lime doesn't work. Cement must be used. And what we figured out was gray bond across the board. Across the board. It can work in clays. It can work in in sand. It can't work on the extremes, but it works in uh, most of the the soils. So we're able to now bridge that gap and offer customers an alternative. So this must be. I mean, obviously, you're not going to get into like numbers on the show and that, but this must there must be potent, like huge potential, like you know what, the, the, limitless. The, the, it, it's it's a huge thing for our customers. What it is because yeah. it, it it allows them a choice now to say, okay, in, instead of using a two step process. So right now, what they're doing is if it's a if it's a a soil that has clay and sand, they got to go in with lime. They got to treat the clay with the lime, potentially dry the soil. The lime dries the soil because the heat it produces, and then they follow up with cement. With Graybon, one step process. You can come in. You can do everything lime and cement does with one product. Because it's got the lime in it, it's got the uh, pozzolan that produces a, a pozzolanic cement, and it saves them time. Uh, you reduce the, uh, the 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 amount of labor, and you're essentially paying the same price as you would for your cement. So it it meets the need for them, and you're reducing your carbon load at the right. same time. So uh, we see it as a win win, and uh, but we're, we're we don't. We don't force the, applic- the the product in the application. We work with a customer to to get them to realize that hey, I can do all this with one product rather than two. Right, right. What is to to for twenty twenty four? What would be the focus, and then even going into twenty twenty five? Where where are the next pieces that need to be put in place? Yeah. So uh, uh, by twenty twenty five. So right now we're building out our production. Our full scale production um, for Graybon, um, and is but, that process? Sorry, to, to, okay, yep. so that process though, that's pretty clear what that it needs to be. This is not this is not R and D production. No, this no, is, no. This, this is, is, you know exactly what needs to get built. We're investing in uh, in, in in equipment, uh, milling, uh, blending, and storage. Right. Um, so we've got our first site will be up in Superior, Wisconsin, which is close to the Canadian border on right. Lake Superior. Um, that'll be up. Uh, Early Q1 2025. Our second site is targeted for St. Mark, uh, Quebec, which is between uh, Montreal and uh, Quebec City. Uh, that should be up uh, mid to end 2025. And then uh, another site in Tacoma, Washington, we're looking at for 2026. Okay. Each of those will be about the same volumes, uh, 
So you can make 50 to 100,000 tons at each one. And we call those small sites. Uh, there's introductory sites okay. to get us going to the market, get the customers uh, going with it. And then in 2027 and beyond, we're planning larger sites as we continue to grow. And uh, we're looking at those uh, likely in somewhere in the western U.S. We have an operation in Utah, in Cricket Mountain, Delta, Utah. Uh, and another one in uh, in Quebec, and maybe continue to build out Superior, depending where the market takes us, right? Right. Because um, we're going to focus on mining, soils, and eventually ready mix. How do you? How do you? Um, and I, I hope we're going to get into the ready mix on maybe a different episode because that's a yeah, it's a big market. That's yeah. a big market, yeah. big discussion. <laughs> um, so I don't even want to go into it because it's like we won't do it justice. But so even those three, the the smaller plants that are being built. How do you decide, is it just about following the market? How are you deciding where to focus? Because oil stabilization and then the the mines, both those, I mean, I, I imagine there's a demand enough for both the, the yeah. all three of those plants in both. <laughs> yeah, so what what we said is how do, how can we get to market quickly and meet the, the customer needs that are out there? And the three sites we chose had existing equipment. That, I see. That we could refurbish and get to market faster. So instead of spending two to three years to build a brand new greenfield site, we could spend six to 12 months to, right. to, get, I to see. get to the market faster. You know, I, I, I don't know what's happening in a lot of industries, but what we're seeing is things are taking longer post-COVID and they're costing more. Yeah, It's just a reality we have to deal with. So if, if someone has existing equipment that can be modified, it's the best way to for market entry and then once you're in then you can plan the bigger production i see because now now if it takes now if that large scale plant does take three yeah. four years five years whatever but if you've got multiple ones throughout right. the country or yeah you're serving the customers already right and then when the larger plant comes in now you got full scale production you can do a lot more things what's been the biggest learning curve for you in these last so you've been in the company three years right, right. Uh, actually i'll make it a two-part question what do you see as the biggest learning curve for graymont What's been the biggest learning curve for you? Let me start with Graymont first. Um, going from producing essentially one product with a lot of different applications, essential needs, different specs based on the application to making an engineered product um, that can be different for every end-use customer, mm. slightly different, to meet that specific strength need or application need that they have. It's a mindset change. Um, where not only do you, your operations have to change, but the way the your operation folks have to think about um, engineering the product differently, quality control different, how you sell the product is different, and getting closer to the customer. To so is that the it, are the is it like two separate teams, or is everybody sort of having to learn it then? Uh, you know what the way we approach it is we we're taking responsibility to work with the entire team to mm. make sure everybody gets on board. Oh, so that's when you, when you mean a culture change, you mean it. Yeah. So it's, people's yeah. day to days are, yeah. it's actually involved. It, it, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it takes time. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can't say, okay, new product. Yeah. Different way of working. No, it's educating everybody involved from uh, an operations person on the ground floor, making it, all the way to someone selling it or someone taking an order from a customer. It is a totally different process, but it's very rewarding because we see we see the value we're bringing. And you know, at the end of the day, we're here to help the customer, but they're also paying us a a, a value for that. Yeah. And you know, it, it's it, it is a win win at the end, and we're we're providing a good service. Now, for me, walking into Graymont, I think I said earlier that I knew what Lime was. And okay, I'm a chemist. I, we worked with it in the past. I, uh, we used it in our processes. I didn't know how many things Lime can do. I knew one little part of it. And what I've learned through this process is that keep an open mind. There's so many applications mm -hmm. that you can go into. And uh, I've, got a, I, I've got to hand it to my team that they challenge the organization to look at different ways we can use our base products into Graybond and go into all these other markets with it. Um, so trust your team. They, yeah. they know as much or more than you do about what's going on. <laughs> have you ever had a chance to have any discussions with the executive team though on that? Because that, that's another thing that fascinates me is that decision because how do I put this the right way? Graymont obviously has an opportunity, but they don't, it's, it, it's not from my understanding. It's not like 
this is not a make or break decision. Like, oh, we need to do that. We need to go into this other sector because they already had a great business. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so it's a certain type of personality that the 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 ultra conservative would go, we're good. Why? Why? Yeah. Why would we start up new plants? This whole different customer base. There's a lot. We're going to have different team members that need to come in. We're going to need to retrain our team. It's a big undertaking. You're talking about an entire mind shift, right. is what you call it. Right. So, what has their approach been? I mean, that's that's not a, not a small thing. That is not a small thing for an executive team to to support. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. We're a 75 year old company, right? We've been doing things well for a long time. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and we're one of the leaders in the lime industry globally. And it's all. I should clarify. Right? Graham has always been a lime. Producer? Uh, I would say uh, primarily. Primarily, yeah. okay. Yeah, we and, and we we got into it uh, early on in our history. We by buying companies that were in it and then building them out. Oh, okay. Uh, so, but uh, we've been really focused on this industry, um, and uh, uh, we're one of the top three in the world. Um, and then, if you look at where we are, we're very strong in North and South America and in Asia Pacific. Mm -hmm. So, the mindset, you know, I can say initially the executive team. Uh, Full support because they said, we want to get into new applications. We know that Lime has a certain niche, but we want to be able to grow beyond our, our niche and expand the company, bring in new competencies, new ideas. So they supported the innovation. Mm -hmm. That was the, and they gave us a lot of runway because innovation takes time. You're going to make a lot of mistakes, you know, starts and stops. But at the end, you have your goal in mind and, you, and you're making your progress toward it. And they supported it. I got to give them full credit. Once we got to a point where we could explain why we're doing Graybond or this idea, yeah. right? And where else we can take the company and applications, you can see the light bulb started to turn mm -hmm. on. Oh, this is totally different. Yeah. We're not selling lime anymore. No, we're not. We're selling lime Plus, we're selling lime and additives in a totally new market that, that needs different companies, different people, different uh, style of working with uh, the end user. They got it, and they said, of course, what's the value? And we, we, we built that out. Here's the value that we could bring by doing this and working with these new clients. Then they realized that this is a direction for Grandma to continue to be growth and innovative for the next 75 years this is this was the right direction to go and we had, we have full support behind us what is what is a bottleneck in getting it to market um again not not getting into like the ready mix world but like oil stabilization mines um because i'm sure there are what what are some of the bottlenecks you have from the from the client point of view like any engineering specs like those right types of right things. so let's take soil stabilization first right so it's a market that uh is less conservative than mining, right? That's the right. good thing. They're willing to take risks, and as long as they they can, they trust you, and they trust us because we've been in this market with Lime for a long time. Yeah, we we know the engineering companies, the contractors. They know uh, that when we deliver something and when we stand behind it technically, it's going to work. So they, when we brought these concepts to them with Graybond. They were willing to say, yeah, let's try it. And we right. had one major contractor that we did the trial with after having the discussion with them, getting their engineering company on board. They said, yep, we see what you're trying to do. We'd like to see if we can replace cement. Let's just trial it. And we were able to deliver a couple of trucks to them, and they trialed it, and it worked. And the next step now, we're doing another trial. If that goes well, and it will. We're going to figure it out. They're going to be on board. They're pushing us for material to buy. And we're yeah. saying, yeah, we'll have it early 2025. <laughs> right. This is actually, I, I want to actually wrap up on this because the why gray bond question is a big thing. Um, I, I think this is, I mean, maybe one of the most important questions is you're not the only one playing around in the, the alternative binder space. But I don't know, I, I may be wrong, but I don't know of really anybody that has the production capacity behind them because even if someone came with an alternative uh binder tomorrow that was amazing they they, they don't have the capacity i mean you're already you've already got capacity to put it into the market and it's going to only scale up 
how big of a competitive advantage, I know this is almost like the most obvious question you could ask, but it must be a huge competitive advantage to get into the market. Well, it, it gives people less heartburn. Right. That yeah. they, they know that we're going to have production behind us. And we're a company that can put the effort and the funds behind our, what we're saying to them in words, right. right? There's a lot of startups out there that are uh, looking at this space and coming up with new ideas, new, new materials. Can, if you look at us, we're a startup within Grima. This idea right. was a startup, yeah. but we had the full backing of a big corporation with the funds and energy and will to say, make it happen. Yeah, and you know we're fortunate. We we're at a point where we're making it happen, and now the 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 our parent, Graymont, is saying we're going to put the energy and funds behind you to have production. Yeah, early next year, so you can support your customer base. It's absolutely amazing. So you know, we're not going to be alone in this. Competition is good, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I I I fully expect that there'll be other entrants. We'll have a head start. That's okay. You know, they, they may catch up, but everybody will have their niche. Yeah. And we expect Graybon to continue to grow. It's the start of a family of products for us. Right. Um, we're looking forward five, 10 years. We're going to build out more products, bigger portfolio, more focused, going into a lot of applications in the cons- general construction industry. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's exciting times. <laughs> It's uh, it, it's going to be a whole new little empire that you're building. Well, whatever. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Sorry, I, couldn't, I couldn't help. It I don't want to say that. I, that was just a <laughs> silly joke about the Roman reference. Um, no, but it is amazing. It, it is, um, and I think just to quickly wrap up on this is what you're talking about. You know, a a, a company that is built something over 75 years. And I I think a lot of times in the entrepreneurship world, which I I definitely come out of, um, is there's almost this temptation to try to bypass the power of that, a really solid company behind innovation. Um, People think of innovation sometimes as it's got to be brand new. And it is new what you're building, but it's built on the back of something that's so strong. That when you have the opportunity to do that, it's a, it sucks to compete against companies like that. Let's put it that way. It's no, it, it's it's a real strength. Thank thanks for saying that. I mean, we look we're we're we like to think we're a little humble in this that we're not. Yeah, I, you know, and I know I know I'm I'm definitely you know, the one saying it. But yeah, you know, we're, we're not here to change the world. We're here to affect the next development in the world. And right. We we we, we think we have an innovation that is it, it, it's going to aid. Uh, humanity, right? There's there's issues with greenhouse gases. We're helping impact that. There's issues with supply of uh, in certain parts of the world with binders. You know what? We have an, an alternative, right? And we're going to work with customers to find the optimum for them. Yeah. And uh, we're going to stand behind our words. That we're going to have capacity for you, and we'll be able to deliver to you. Um, we've proven that for 75 years with our base products. Um, if we've let anybody muddy down, it's rare, um, and uh, we 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 really stand behind what we say, and and uh, we we you know we we're honest with them. If we can't supply somebody, we'll tell them. Yeah. No, it's we're not optimum supplier for you in this location. Go to competitor X. Yeah. It's uh, that way we don't get in trouble. It's, right. It's and that's part business. of that's the experience of being a good company. You know, not to do that type of stuff because you know in the end. Because when you've already yeah. supplied, they'll remember that you were honest with them. Yeah, right? it, it'll come back and bite you. We don't, yeah. we, you know. I'd rather be honest to somebody. You know, uh, you know. I want, I want to, I want to be in business 75, 150 years from now. That's I'm not going to be here, but the legacy will be here, and somebody else will be doing it. Yeah. And uh, customers want the same thing at the end of the day. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Frank, I I love working with Grandma. It's been a, a pleasure getting just getting to know you a little bit as well. So thanks for coming on, Durant. Glad we could do this in person. And uh, we've got more coming up with with Grandma. We'll keep covering the story. Uh, but so far, it's been quite exciting to be a small part. Jared, so thank uh, you. It's been a great experience. We look forward to the next uh, chats with you and your team. 
and uh, hopefully get you out in the industry and see what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm hoping you're going to put me on a plane somewhere soon. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Frank. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and thank you, everybody, for watching. We just, the, the support of the audience makes the show because we wouldn't be able to keep producing them otherwise. So thank you for watching. We'll have lots of links to Gray Mott so you can get more information. Uh, we'll have uh, Frank's LinkedIn page. You can connect directly with him. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you on the next episode of Mining Now.